The drawing, just lines, ideas, recollection. Sits lightly on the canvas, stands blank. So innocently white, no crime yet committed. Just charcoal thoughts on linen skin, could be a city full of light or a sordid back street. Could I leave those lines out, add a tower or more trees? Unseen figures crowd the shadows, lurk silently on bare verandas. Soon to live or not to be, the choice is mine. I thrill at the responsibility. Now will come decision time, rebuild the structure, cast adrift all detractors from the picture. Paint and colour come alive from just a line, a thought, not mine, a startled glimpse of the divine. Very important in my work is structure and composition. And I suppose that's a bit of the German in me, I think. I really like structured work. The composition's really important to me. And so, of course, the structures like bridges and uh, churches uh, and water towers, for instance, they become the, the pivotal point of the structure. And then the rest of it sort of flows from that. Once I get that composition, and if, if the drawing doesn't go right, the painting won't go right. I have to get the drawing correct first. I owe a lot to Bill Robinson for that, for the perspective, of course. I don't consciously think about what I'm looking for in a painting. I don't, I don't, it's not a conscious thing. And over the years, I, I can look back and see how I've selected on structure, colour, and then something mysterious. And I'm realising now that something mysterious, it's not really me doing the choosing. It's a mysterious thing that just lights on one view or one backyard or one scene that it speaks to me. And then I find after I've painted it, somebody really relates in a very personal way to that. It's like I haven't chosen it, it's like um, the creator chooses it, it's not me. Having a whole exhibition is really useful because you can see the theme running through after you've done the paintings. And um, what I'm painting now, I, I often have this solo figure, but I also paint people in who wander into the picture. Uh, they just happen to be there. As someone pointed out, they're not actually connected to the place that I'm painting. To just there and um, I've actually painted people in from my imagination that I have found later to be real people that's been an extraordinary experience actually something really weird but now there's um, there's often this dark figure that I've put in I've done that for a long time actually seen that as being the watcher the watcher you know the outsider looking at what's happening out there and that figure has appeared in this latest exhibition in quite a few pictures. And I think that's really the creator, that's really God watching. The roads in the pictures are the journey we're all on. And there are signposts on the journey and there are things you can read and learn about, but look at all the people whose windows are shut and they've got the chair on the veranda, but there's nobody in the chair because there's nobody home, there's nobody taking any notice, there's nobody learning anything, there's nobody finding out what they're really about and why they're on this earth. And so that's what the road is, it's this journey with, with um, the stairs, there's often stairs in the pictures and there's often railings which are, the crossed railings are, are, and the barred railings of course, are all the obstacles that are in our way. Well, Brisbane's my hometown. Um, I've always lived in Brisbane, always lived on the north side. Um, I was born during an air raid at Del Keith Hospital at uh, Eagle Junction. The first house I lived in was a small workers cottage with railing verandas and tin roof at Kalinga and uh, where my grandparents actually came after they migrated from Germany. 
and then I've lived in I lived in a couple of other different houses around Wollowan and then we moved to a big old Queenslander in Clayfield with big verandas and uh, built in about 1880 I think. I think that house influenced me a great deal because it was an unhappy house. I had one sister but it, I had a very lonely childhood. There weren't many children, there weren't any children around. Uh, very lonely and a, str a strained childhood, I could say. So I really delved into books and, and painting and drawing and making things was my, um, my release, I suppose. This one here at Torrington Street, Spring Hill, um, I used to walk down this street when I was at Grandma and uh, to, to the Spring Hill Baths and I hated swimming. I couldn't swim. I hated it. And it was freezing cold. Anyway, so I wrote a poem about that one. Feel the freezing mid-May morning, chilling toes on aqua tiles. Old Spring Hill Baths have seen some champions churning up those deep blue miles. Shouts of swim coach, smell of chlorine, evaporating down the years. Boys and girls from nearby grammars march down here on different Tuesdays, some with joy, some in dread. Towels neatly rolled up in their swim bags. Who would think? Some now are dead. Others have turned into lawyers, artists, nurses, even doctors toil across the road instead. Well, I always wanted to paint and write and I started um, I started having lessons when I was about 10 at, at school. Then I went on to grammar and um, I had a, quite a good painting teacher there. I won a scholarship from there to art college. Um, I first did fashion drawing and uh, anatomy and that sort of thing and, and absolutely loved it and was passionate about art college. Absolutely passionate. I, I loved best, best years of my youth probably. Misspent most of it but we had a great time there. And I had, was very fortunate to have the most wonderful teacher, William Robinson, who's famous all over the world and won the Archibald several times. And he taught me really everything I have learnt um, is directly due to him because um, he was wonderful with colour study and wonderful with perspective. We had to draw things like... Um, uh, hexagonal, octagonal boxes with the lid that the lid was open at 45 degrees and the sun was at 20 degrees and we had to draw that in the shadow and so very complicated and he was a hard taskmaster but um, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Very, very fortunate really that I had him again as a mature age student so altogether probably five years training with the same uh, tutor. Well, I sort of painted and drew all the time, but um, then when I married the first time, I had a couple of young, I had three children, and two of the children were very ill, and um, and two of them died, one at two and one at seven. So really, I had quite a long period of a difficult marriage where I didn't do any painting at all, um, except for trying to earn a bit of extra money. Uh, we were actually visiting someone in hospital at St Andrews, and as we walked to the car park, this couple walked out. Again, these cu this couple just walked into the picture. They walked out, they walked across the road and they were holding hands and you just knew it was something serious. You just knew. And it just reminded me of all the years I visited my children in hospital that went on for years. And uh, so I really, yeah, I really related to that. They came from the hospital quiet and cold. Didn't speak, hearts bleak. So carefully crossed the street, each moment sharp to hold. He took her hand. Warmth squeezed the fear. Hope rose, dispelled foes. Light and shadows, a miracle drew near. And then when I met Martin, um, I, I, he was man on wildlife and bird watching. So I started doing uh, paintings of birds and paintings of um, possums. We became wildlife carers and 
and uh, filled the house up with as many possums and birds as we could probably fit in. We had a kangaroo in our sunroom and we had um, um, a possum in the lounge and uh, <laughs> kookaburras <laughs> in the cage at the back. So we released them into Barden and um, didn't have enough trees so we actually got together with the Lions Club and planted all the trees along the creek at Barden which are now of course huge and full of our possums. So it was very satisfying. So I had lots of solo exhibitions as a wildlife artist but once we moved to New Farm um, the possums would actually come and sit on the side fence and the house next door was a beautiful turn of the century Queenslander with stained glass windows and so I started painting the possums with that house as the backdrop and then got more and more interested in the houses. We also were mad on real estate, so we're always looking at houses and, um, you know, it, we're always thinking about how you could fix this house and what you could do to make that better. So by the time, by the time we renovated our 15 room house at New Farm, we were cured of that. The really interesting phase of my work, uh, it changed quite dramatically once I moved to the city, the inner city, because the animals started, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't be wildlife carers anymore obviously except we had possums in our cupboards but we weren't caring for them they were more or less um, freeloading on us um, so I started seeing the inner city in a completely different way that I'd ever had before and and so I started to get totally involved and of course when we were still living at Baden we were driving through Paddington and uh, Paddington, Milton, places like that, to get to our first gallery, which was at Bowen Hills. So I did lots of sketches of Paddington and, and the inner city there. And then once we were living at New Farm, I would um, work, I would uh, have, you know, I had my studio in the building and, and I would be running the, we ran the gallery seven, six days a week. And then at five o'clock at night, then we'd, we'd go out looking for places to paint. And then I, and that's why I loved the light because it was always five o'clock, you know, where the light was fantastic and it transformed places. Like in New Farm in those days was quite a dangerous place. I mean, we had, we had a shootout outside our front door. We had a fire bombing and a um, couple of murders, and you know, the girls used to be on all the different corners. It was a very interesting place to live. We found it very exciting, uh, but there were lots of dark places, and. I became quite fascinated by the, with the backyards and the backs of places and then seeing how the light transformed. So that became my main focus of my work, of painting inner city views. I, I wasn't interested in the history, although I'm passionate about history, but that wasn't what motivated me. I, I, there were, something mysterious would happen when I would see some place to paint. Because after I'd painted it and gone back, I'd often find that I'd think, what, what did I, what made me paint that? This one's about Hill Street, Spring Hill, and it's Mario's place. Here's Mario. He's still got the only unrenovated house in the street. Blue gold autumn day. Good to dream on the veranda with views of the city. A changing view. Mull over other days of two jobs, bringing up the kids, working in the laundry of the general hospital, weekends building fences, home after dark. Security grew to a rented cottage or two, wild young things who'd skipped the rent, travelling men who came and went, migrant lads with mouths to feed, young and poor, just like me. The Italian migrants went on to buy other places to rent out, which Martin and I did for a short time. We had a rented house and, and the ones who'd skip the rent would drop, you know, they'd move in, they'd have wild parties and then they'd leave without paying the rent. So <laughs> I really related to him. So a lot of people, yes, they just think that, that it's a historical record. And really, a lot of people think it's all nostalgia, which is totally not. It's the past, the present and the future. And in just about every painting, and probably I could find it in every painting, that there's modern, there's today as well. Like this, this big painting here um, of changing faces, Paddington. 
where you're looking down the sweep of the road and up the hill, there's a couple of big big houses in it that, are, that were obviously earlier cottages that have been expanded, made bigger and made modern. And, um, you know, the modern architects really do challenge me tremendously. Um, but I decided that I, I don't change them to look nostalgic the way they were. I paint them as they are now. Occasionally I'll change something, but not very often. So I left them modern, even though it was such a challenge, because the, the, the houses are so big, if I'd made them into traditional houses, they'd have made all the other small workers' cottages look ridiculous, you see. So there's always the modern. It's not nostalgia. It's about today, yesterday and tomorrow. All my work, even from when I was doing wildlife, I can see now has been about transformation and about rescue. All of it. It's always been about that. And it's about, about um, well, with the animals, they'd come in bedraggled and half dead and you'd, you'd bring them back to life and, and uh, set them off back into, the, into nature. And with the houses we renovated, it was about bringing back what had been there before and what potential the, or what the potential the place had. And, uh, and I think the, the same now is happening in the paintings. It's all about transforming places and, and houses that have maybe had a bad history, uh, been dark or um, had bad things happen. And the same with people, of course. The, the light's transforming and people can um, change and have a whole new picture and hope. <laughs>